Welcome back. Three people have been arrested in connection with the deadly shooting that claimed four lives at a Sweet 16 party over the weekend in Dadeville, Alabama. The suspects, including two teenagers, are now facing murder charges. A move toward justice in one of the many crimes sweeping our nation. For more, let's bring in spokesperson for the National Police Association and retired Chicago area police officer Betsy Brentner smith and law enforcement consultant and 25-year veteran with the Los Angeles Police Department, Deanne Joseph. Thank you so much for joining us. This morning, Betsy, to start with you, I want to get your reaction to this attack. So the 20 year old suspect, Wilson Lamar Hill Jr., now facing four counts of reckless murder. Uh, what do you make of this? Unfortunately, we're talking about this nearly every week, these types of situations. Well, you're absolutely right. And this case is just another horrific example of the violence that we are seeing around the nation. But and and of course, the administration and a lot of people on the progressive left are talking about gun control and assault weapons bans and things like that. Here's the here's the deal. For the last 50 years, gun ownership has remained absolutely steady for, for 50 years. But for the last three years, mass shootings have gone up. Violent crime has gone up. I think it is now time that this social experiment that we've been under, defund the police, de-incarceration, uh, et cetera, et cetera, it's over. And now the American public needs to stand up and say, this is enough. We want police to do their jobs. We want prosecutors to do their jobs. And we want the violence to stop. We know how to do it. We did it in the 90s. We can do it again now. Yeah, so many times when we talk about you know these crimes, a lot of these the suspects had committed multiple crimes before. This isn't their first time. Uh, Dion, this mass shooting, it wasn't in a big city that we normally focus on. Um, although you know we've seen this, this is happening. Neighbors turning on each other, you know, with guns. Uh, this is not just big city issues now. This is happening all over the place. Well, I just want to focus on the, the, the catalyst for all of this, this current wave. And the focus, like Bessie said, is this. We are experiencing uh, the decarceration activists, right? Uh, and now they're becoming district attorneys or they're masquerading as district, district attorneys. And uh, they're being strategically placed uh, all over the United States of America. And their policies basically give the criminal element permission to steal, kill, and in some of their minds, even uh, steal Robin in some of their minds, even kill people. So in the name of leveling the playing field for individuals that they truly believe are the victims, and that's the criminal element, while at the same time devaluing the lives of the actual victims. I was watching uh, Miss Madeline Brain, and uh, I can honestly tell you when I watched her testimony, uh, I could almost feel myself uh, uh, welling up mm -hmm. and feeling her pain and listening to the politicians, the political leaders who are now buying into this twisted ideology defending the actions of the DA and DAs like that. It's really, really scary times we're living in. Uh, I think that's the catalyst for the wave uh, uh, that we're seeing right now. Yeah, it really, it's really scary. Uh, I mean, Betsy, going back to those cities, we think about, you know, when you go to these cities, okay, don't go to this area because this is dangerous. That's not even the case anymore in New York and Chicago. So you're a retired Chicago area police officer. Let's talk about the week ending on the 16th. Chicago saw 20 murders, 145 robberies, 621 motor vehicle thefts. Uh, there's this new mayor, um, a mayor-elect, Brandon Johnson. Um, are they going to clean up this crime, or do you think that he's going to follow the same path that Lori Lightfoot did? I hope that he wants to clean up this crime because what is happening in Chicago and in the Chicago suburbs is we are see we are outgunned. Law enforcement is outgunned. We are taking Glock handgun after Glock handgun off of thugs and gangbangers. And you know what? They have uh, sights on them. They have lights. They have optics. And they have their own backup. You know, for crimes as simple as catalytic converter theft, the criminals have backup teams with rifles. We have less and less police officers, more and more well-armed criminals, and we have a prosecutor in Kim Fox in Cook County who doesn't seem to want to do anything about it. And what did Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson talk about when we had this teen takeover in Chicago last weekend? He said, well, this is because they really need jobs and they don't have a place to hang out. What's happening is people are seeing this. Tourism is going to be done in Chicago. People are not going to visit our beautiful city. As, as The same thing is happening in many other cities, including New York and L.A. 
and it we're, that we're just going to have these crime deserts where it's going to be like the purge unless people decide to do something about it. And that is putting pressure on their political leaders and bringing in police leaders that are willing to do something about it and then taking on these woke prosecutors. Yeah, I heard I heard him say that, you know, it's almost like, oh, well, the, you know, these these criminals, poor them, it's not their fault. Um, Dion, here's, we talked about, Betsy mentioned, mentioned defunding the police. Here's AOC describing the misplaced money for the New York City police officers. Take a listen. Eric Adams has just increased police wages by 28%. Mm -hmm. Is that misplaced? I, I think so. We are now at a point where officially most officers are paid more than a teacher with a master's degree serving these same kids involved in these same incidents. We are defunding safety when we are taking all of those resources and demanding that every single department... All right, Deanna, I'm not sure if that's completely accurate when he's talk she's talking about salaries there. Um, but again, I mean, we can't get police officers to join the force. And, and then she's talking about this, this funding. Just about 15 seconds, your reaction. What you're witnessing is an example of these politicians that I speak of who their ideas and values are more important than the very people that they're charged to help keep safe. I mean, my God, we just had school shootings and you want to sit there and say that police don't believe they deserve more pay to go and protect teachers and students who are getting shot, all, shot up all over the country. It's insulting. And I'm just being real. She knows what she's saying is false. Mm -hmm. She just has to stick to, her, stick to her script. She has her orders, but she's dead wrong and people are dying across yeah. this country and shame on her for that. Yeah, you're so right. Deanne Joseph, Betsy Brentner-Smith, thank you so much. Appreciate it.